see uh, we could uh, one could say that uh, the sole objective of linear algebra is to solve uh, a single equation okay let me write down this equation is to solve uh, primary objective the primary objective of uh, linear algebra is to solve uh, objective is to solve the equation ax equal to b the linear equation ax equal to b where uh, what is a what is b let me give you uh, the details a is uh, an m cross n matrix aij will be the will denote the ith row jth column entry so this is uh, a matrix of uh, order uh, m by n m rows n columns and entries will be real that is what uh, we mean by this okay r with a vertical arrow is uh, the set of real field of real numbers. So a is an m cross n matrix uh, this is given I am also given the right hand side uh, vector b is uh, b i this belongs to R M okay these two are given these are given the vector X we are seeking X a column vector. Okay, let me go back to this notation. We want x is equal to x j in R n to seek x that satisfies this equation. Okay, a x equal to b. So one could say that this is the central uh, principle of uh, uh, central objective of uh, linear algebra. So our uh, objective is to any any uh, practical problem can be any practical linear problem can be modeled uh, in uh, this manner to solve a system of the type uh, ax equal to b okay and uh, towards the end of this course uh, one would uh, hope uh, we will be in a position to solve this at least understand uh, the equation ax equal to b whether it has a solution if there is a solution how to compute the solutions if it does not have a solution we will still have to solve this equation okay. So uh, does this system have a solution that is the first question existence if it has a solution is it unique if the solution is not unique how to at least compute certain solutions and then the extreme case when uh, the system does not have a solution one would still like to solve it. So that leads to the notion of uh, best approximate solutions okay and you see that uh, this uh, again involves matrices so for the first few lectures uh, we are going to discuss uh, matrices in particular uh, we are going to discuss what are called as the elementary row operations on matrices okay okay to give a motivation to uh, the notion of uh, elementary row op row operations and uh, why one must uh, study those operations let me go back to a 2 by 2 example okay this example is something that uh, we have uh, seen probably even in our high school higher secondary but I will keep that as a motivating example and also to give a geometric uh, view of solution of linear equations okay uh, remember that this geometry thing can be applied only if there are uh, two variables for three variables also one could do but uh, it becomes a little more difficult so for two variables we will uh, look at the geometric point of view of uh, what a system represents what a solution represents etc and as uh, you will see when the number of variables uh, uh, increases you will have to take uh, recourse to a program it is not something that you can solve on the blackboard so one needs to write down a program and then uh, enter uh, the inputs in a system and then solve it numerically okay. Now numerical solutions are again not part of this uh, 
course, but I will at least tell you the theoretical background behind these numerical techniques. That is why we need the that is where we need the notion of uh, elementary row operations. Okay, so we will discuss elementary row operations, uh, some of the properties of uh, uh, these, uh, 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 pro some of the properties of the matrices that are uh, so-called row equivalent matrices, and then see how systems can be solved. Okay, we will also look at how. Uh, one could find the inverse of a matrix using the elementary row operations okay. Uh, so let me go back to the two dimensional example uh, motivating two dimensional example where one could use geometry. So we have seen uh, equations of this type uh, I am just uh, taking a hypothetical situation 2x1 plus 3x2 equals 1 and uh, let us say I have 3x1 plus 2x2 equals 2. Okay, this is an equation involving. Uh, uh, this is a system involving two equations in two unknowns. This is a particular instance of the system A x equal to B. Okay, where uh, A is the coefficient matrix. The uh, the right hand side vector, uh, also called uh, sometimes as a requirement vector, is. Uh, 1 2 now uh, you will see that uh, I am using a column representation uh, so any vector standing alone for me will be a column vector okay this is the requirement vector the unknown uh, vector has uh, two coordinates the unknown vector has two components x1 and x2 the question is uh, does this uh, system have a solution geometrically what is the meaning of uh, a system having solution. So what one does is to uh, geometrically we solve this problem is to draw these lines okay 2x1 plus 3x2 equals 1 the scaling will be only approximate okay. So what are the points uh, that uh, this uh, line uh, passes through one by two comma zero right x one is one by two let us say this is one for me so this is one by two approximately and uh, the other one is zero comma one by three okay so let us uh, this is half so let us say this is my one by three zero comma one by three okay and so this is uh, line 1 okay so this represents uh, 2x1 plus 3x2 equals 1 and uh, similarly we can draw the other line uh, it passes through uh, 0 comma 1 is that right 0 comma 1 that is somewhere here okay and uh, the other one is uh, 2 by 3 comma 0 2 by 3 comma 0 is somewhere here okay let us say here point 0.3 see this is half is not it and then I uh, okay so this is uh, 2 by 3 comma 0 this is uh, let us say 0 comma what is the other one. 1 okay and then uh, draw the line joining them approximately extend it this is the first line they meet at a point okay, these two lines are not parallel because the slopes are different one has uh, the slope 3 by minus 3 by 2 the other one has uh, minus 2 by 3 the slopes are different. So these two are not parallel so they intersect and uh, so look at this point you can find the coordinates of this point okay that gives a solution. So geometric uh, viewpoint is that uh, if the two lines are not parallel then we know in Euclidean geometry the two lines uh, must meet somewhere the point at which uh, the two lines meet is unique if two lines are not parallel then they meet at a unique point that unique point is the solution for the system of equations. So one could solve and uh, get the solution for the system yeah so 4 by 5 
minus 1 by 5 that is a unique solution yeah thanks. Let us look at another uh, system I will take the first equation as it is 2 x 1 plus 3 x 2 equals 1 the second equation for me will be 4 x 1 plus uh, 6 x 2 equals 2 okay you can see what I have done the second equation is a multiple of the first one okay the slopes are the same these two lines are parallel. So by geometry we know that uh, there is no solution right are you sure so these two lines are uh, the same so there are infinitely many solutions okay these two lines are the same there are infinitely many solutions and one can write down uh, the infinitely many solutions in the form of a solution set. these lines the set of uh, solutions let me write uh, S for that this is the set of all uh, alpha comma beta such that uh, beta equals 1 by 3 times 1 minus 2 alpha alpha element of r that is the set of all solutions okay is that okay one could plug in and verify that this satisfies uh, the equation that is 3 beta that is 3 x2 plus 2 x1 equals 1 okay so that is a solution set in this uh, example so these two lines are one and the same one final example there is a unique uh, solution that is the first example infinitely many solutions second example the last example is where it does not have a solution okay let us say I have 3 here on the left uh, it is 2 times the previous uh, equation on the right it is 3 times the previous equation so these uh, do not have a solution. So what is the geometric viewpoint please think it over these are just parallel lines right okay these represent uh, two parallel lines these represent two parallel lines and uh, hence uh, have no solution okay now these are the three uh, situations that one has uh, when uh, one studies the equation ax equal to b okay all right so as, as I mentioned uh, there are uh, situations when you will have to solve inconsistent uh, systems this is a typical example of an inconsistent this is an example of an inconsistent system because it does not have a solution. So any solution that does not have any any system rather which does not have a solution is called an inconsistent uh, system uh, in the case of inconsistent system one still has to solve okay but uh, you need uh, either methods from calculus or uh, methods from uh, inner product spaces to deal with uh, such problem okay so that is just to give you a geometric uh, geometric viewpoint of uh, what uh, linear uh, the, the solutions of uh, a linear equation okay what is what is the geometric representation of a solution of uh, linear equations and you, you see that this can be done only for uh, two dimensions okay only when there are two variables three variables one could still do but it gets a little more complicated four variables is out of question okay let us go back to this uh, system that uh, I had uh, written down uh, earlier the first example which is uh, 2x1 plus 6x2 equals 1 
3 x 1 plus 2 x 2 equals uh, 2 this is what I wrote down as a first example how do we solve this in uh, high school multiply the first equation by 3 multiply the second equation by 2 and then subtract 1 from the other okay. So let us call this uh, equation 1 equation 2 then uh, 3 times equation 1 gives me 6 x 1 plus 9 x 2 equals 3 2 times uh, equation 2 gives me 6 x 1 plus 4 x 2 equals 4 then uh, these coefficients are the same so one does uh, a subtraction subtracting we get uh, first equation is uh, 6 x 1 plus 9 x 2 equals 3 uh, instead of the second equation we have 5 x 2 equals minus 1. So I am able to solve uh, for x 2 immediately looking at the last equation so I have uh, x 2 equal to minus 1 by 5 and uh, I go back to this equation and uh, solve for uh, x1 yeah I could do that but I want to specifically lead you into uh, formal uh, Gaussian elimination see the objective is to formalize Gaussian elimination Gaussian elimination we have learnt in high school one of the aims of linear algebra um, is to formalize uh, Gaussian elimination in such a way that one could write a program for instance and uh, uh, use a system for uh, computing the uh, solutions of a system where the number will be huge the number of equations number of unknowns these will be huge okay. So one needs uh, an automated uh, system which can take care of uh, that. So uh, intentionally I am writing down these equations. Uh, from this what we normally do is immediately conclude uh, subtracting 1 from the other that x2 is minus 1 by 5 and then we go back to equation 1 and then solve for x1 okay. So let me say equation 1 gives me x1 is 4 by 5 okay. So this is what we have learnt in uh, high school uh, this is Gaussian elimination if you have not uh, heard the name uh, Gaussian elimination before we would like to formalize as I uh, mentioned but before uh, we uh, look at uh, how to formalize this let us look at the pat let us look at uh, the structure of the second system that uh, we derived from uh, the system 1 what is the structure of the second system the second system ha has a has a simpler structure which has allowed me to solve solve it. The simplest structure uh, when you compare with the first one first system is that uh, in the second equation the first variable uh, is not there okay. In general uh, we seek the following in general the objective is in general the objective is uh, um, to reduce to reduce uh, whatever it means to reduce the system ax equal to b let me call this uh, system 1 to reduce the system ax equal to b to a system of the type cx equals d I will call this uh, system 2 I want to reduce system ax equal to b to a system cx equals d where c has a simpler structure that is what reduction means where c has a simpler structure than a only then we would have reduced okay the system to a simpler system this is the objective and uh, we have already uh, uh, seen what kind of uh, a C we are uh, seeking what is the type of C that we are seeking we are seeking C to be an upper triangular matrix okay. So let me write down uh, the matrix form of uh, this system 1 this is system 2 for me okay this is system 1 this is system 2 
what is the matrix form of these two systems to motivate uh, what we mean by a simpler uh, coefficient matrix C. So in this example A is uh, 2, 3, 3, 2, C is uh, 6, 9, 0, 5 okay this is a 2 by 2 example where you do not see much of the triangular structure but still it illustrates uh, uh, what we would like to achieve an upper triangular matrix okay C is uh, an upper triangular matrix. A yes, uh, square matrix is called upper triangular if the entries below the principal diagonal are 0 okay. In general what is uh, the structure of C? In general see remember in this case uh, I am only dealing with square uh, systems I have 2 equations and 2 unknowns okay. So we are uh, presently dealing only with uh, square systems the number of equations is equal to the number of unknowns. So in general A is uh, A11, A12 etc, A1, N, A21, A22 etc, A2N, An1, An2 etc, Ann. This is A and uh, what is the C that we are seeking upper triangular. So C must uh, C11. C12, C13 etc, C1, N this entry is 0, C22, C23 etc, C2, N all these entries are 0 the final row is C, N, N okay. So this is uh, of the upper triangular form and so AX equal to B becomes CX equal to D right. So let us look at the general, uh, general uh, problem. Ax equal to b reduces to cx equal to d that is let me now expand matrix multiplication. So let me now expand and see what it looks like c11 x1 plus c12 x2 etc c1 n xn equals uh, d1. C22 X2 plus C23 X3 etc. C2 N Xn equals D2 etc. The last equation C N N Xn equals Dn okay. Let me also write down the equation before the last equation. C N minus 1 N minus 1 Xn minus 1 C n minus 1 n x n equals d n minus 1 this is the last this is the equation before the last equation. So what we have done is first uh, solve for one of the unknowns from the last equation the, the last unknown the unknown x n. So we get x n as d n by c n n provided c n n is not 0 okay. See we are not dealing with uh, those technicalities right now. What is the guarantee that CNN is not 0 etc we do not know right now there is no such uh, there is no guarantee that we have till now but it is working in this example okay. So if CNN is not 0 then XN is DN by CNN go to the previous equation substitute for this uh, XN you determine XN minus 1 then uh, the previous equation will determine XN minus 2 etc this is called backward substitution. Okay, this method is called a backward substitution this is what we have uh, done in the case of two variables in this particular problem. So we need to derive a C okay from the matrix A we must do certain operations uh, in order to get uh, to the matrix C which has this uh, particular uh, upper triangular structure. Now that is where uh, elementary row operations uh, 
come into the picture. So let me uh, give you the details of what elementary row operations are okay and then uh, uh, actually do a problem where uh, the system reduces to a, a system where you have uh, an upper triangular structure where the coefficient matrix has upper triangular structure okay. So let me first tell you what uh, these elementary row operations are okay. So we are uh, uh, specifically interested in uh, only 3 row operations let me list uh, these uh, operations okay so given a matrix uh, a we perform the following uh, operations the first one is multiply a row by a non zero constant okay. multiply any row by a non zero constant that is the first operation second operation is uh, replace uh, any row let us say replace uh, the s row by s row plus a constant alpha times t row okay replace the s row by s row plus a constant times uh, another row i am calling that as the t row that's the second operation third operation is interchange any two rows interchange any two rows okay. these are the three elementary row operations let us formalize uh, this let us introduce a function and then uh, write down these operations in terms of uh, this function let me call e as uh, a function from r m cross n to r m cross n will be a uh, particular elementary row operation e uh, denotes a particular elementary row operation okay e uh, denotes a particular row operation i will use e1 e2 e3 to denote the three row operations so what is e1 of a okay i need to i need to write down uh, e1 a completely in terms of the entries of a that is what i will do next what is e1 of a so let us say e1 corresponds to the first elementary row operation let us say e1 is the function corresponding to the first elementary row operation then uh, what is the formula for uh, e1 so e1 is a function a function is known if uh, its uh, action on each uh, element is known 
okay so what is e1 of a multiply any row by a non zero constant let's fix that row let's fix that row and say that it is a s row that we are multiplying by a non zero constant alpha okay so this is if uh, see i want the entries of uh, e1 of a so let me say e1 a ij what is the i throw j element of uh, e1 of a e1 a ij is uh, this is equal to tell me if this is all right this is aij if uh, i is uh, not equal to s if uh, i is equal to s i am multiplying the s row by non zero constant alpha so if i is equal to s then it is s times i am sorry alpha times uh, asj this uh, describes the action of e1 completely is that okay the s row has been replaced by a constant times uh, s row so this is e1 of a for me this uh, gives a complete description can we write down e2 of a similarly e2 ij replace the s row by s row plus alpha times t row okay if uh, i is not equal to s then there is no change so it is aij as before the entries of a corresponding to these uh, rows except the s row for the s row what do we have if i is uh, equal to s the s row has been replaced by s row plus alpha times t row it is uh, asj plus alpha atj if i is equal to s okay so this describes the second operation completely third operation interchange any two rows let us say we are interchanging s and t row s and row t okay so if it is not uh, row s or row t if uh, i is not equal to s or t then there is no change if uh, i is uh, equal to s it is uh, atj and if uh, i is equal to t it is asj so this is the complete formula for uh, e3 of a okay so what i have done is to rewrite the elementary row operations in a way which will be useful for us to apply to verify certain properties okay especially i want to demonstrate that um, each of these elementary row operations uh, has an inverse operation and that the inverse operations are also elementary row operations of the same type okay this is an important uh, observation okay let me repeat each of these elementary row operations is invertible see we have uh, we are viewing these elementary row operations as functions okay so we would like to know whether uh, these functions are invertible do, do they have do they have inverses okay so what we will show by using this definition by using this definition we will be able to show that uh, these are uh, the inverses of these elementary row operations are also uh, elementary row operations not only that they are of the same type okay that will be useful in uh, reducing a system to a system of the type uh, cx equal to d with a specific uh, structure uh, for c okay so i'll stop at this for uh, today